Hey, church family, this is Pastor Matt Parra. I'm here with my friend and colleague and Bible worker for the North New South Wales Conference. His name is Marcial Hernandez. Marcial Hernandez, he originally came to Australia, I think, in 2000, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marcial, 15? 2017. 2017. Well, I knew it was an odd number year. So, <laughs> yeah. um, Marcial came from Honduras, uh, Central America, to attend our uh, my department's uh, evangelism training program, or you can call it personal ministries training school, called Arise. And uh, yeah, God's led him to stay around and enjoy life in Australia. And uh, hey, before we get into what we want to talk about, Marcial, because I asked you to have an interview with me so we could chat about uh, two young people who've just given their lives to Christ through baptism, uh, through the ministry God's given to you. Uh, but uh, could you just tell us a little bit uh, about who you are, where you came from? And I just said you came from Honduras, but tell yep. us your story a little bit, how you got here. Um, well, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, like my, my Parra said, my name is Marcel, Marcel Hernandez. I think, Matt, you're the only one who pronounced my name correctly in Australia. So <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, coming from Honduras. I was working as a as a missionary by, uh, back home. I was yeah serving as a missionary for three years for three years, yeah. and then uh, I was ending my time there. And the, the Lord, to make the long story short, because it's a long story, just yeah. provided the means, provided everything for me to come to to Australia. He opened he opened up the doors, and yeah, uh, I did the Arise program. After that, I did um, the Arise for Life, and I just loved it. I just loved it. Like, I love the Bible studies to people. And yeah, in a nutshell, there's more, but in a nutshell, that's kind of the story. Yeah, yeah. So, for everybody who's listening, they may not know what Arise for Life is. That's a, a departmental ministry of uh, the Personal Ministries Department where we take Arise students. We have them out in our conference doing outreach and ministry, developing them and training them, um, and blessing the churches with their ministry and encouraging the members. Um, what church did you work with, Marcial? I was uh, with Boris in Newcastle, my house church. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's actually, yeah. you know, it's the yeah. church formerly known as my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they moved to one of the But yeah, now at the moment, I'm working in Gosford Church, down the oh. central coast. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, with Pastor Miroslav Stalin yep. Stalinovich. Yeah, he's got a name that's as hard for me to pronounce as it is for most Australians to pronounce your name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. Delinovich, that's a great name. Um, okay, so I guess you're enjoying your time working with Pastor uh, Stalinovich down there, and uh, you've been there for a bit. How's it going? Yeah, good. So far, so good. He's uh, very supportive of, uh, of our ministry here. And yeah, he's been like a really, really good pastor, really good mentor as well. Yeah, he's a pastor's pastor for sure. Um, yeah. And so, okay, so we'll just kind of get into why we're talking. Uh, so two young people were baptized, a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old at Gosford Church. And these yeah. are kids that you were studying the Bible with, I assume. Yeah, correctly. Well, yeah, uh, it was actually a long journey. Yeah. Last year, um, Pastor Dara, I was working with him. And Pastor Dara uh, took me with him to visit this family. They were, um, the wife, yeah, maybe from Brazil. And um, yeah, we started like a long journey with, with, with the kids studying. And it has been almost a little bit more than a year, a little yeah. bit more than a year studying with them. Um, they're like really, really smart kids, like really smart kids. I'm always understanding, asking even difficult questions, and um, yeah, I'm 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 really glad that um, these kids they made their own decision. Their parents never pressured them. Even they said like, if they want to be baptized, I will support them. But if they don't, I'll, I won't pressure them. And I'm really happy that they by themselves they made a decision to to give their life to God. Yeah. So, so as a Bible worker, how, how can you be sure, like when a kid's 12 or 13 years old, like what is it that indicates to you, okay, this, this kid is not just doing what they think they're supposed to do. This kid is, when I say kid, you know, this young person is not just trying to please their parents. Um, but this is a real experience. This is a real decision. How, how, do you, how do you differentiate between that? Or how do you know that a young person is, is genuinely having an experience with God? Yeah. 
Uh, well, first of all, it, it really helped me that um, their mother and their parents told me that um, they were not they were not going to make any pressure on the kids. Yeah. So that really like um, gave like a window for me to say, hey, well, if they make a decision, will be like based on their own um, understanding, you know, of, of the Bible and the, of the scripture. And um, it was just like they really wanted to follow Jesus because we were like uh, lifting up Jesus in every Bible study. And, you know, mm -hmm. like even Jesus himself said that if I'm lifted up, I will draw people onto me. And that's what happened. I was, that's what happened during the Bible study is like Jesus was being lifted up. And they understood. They understood and they were drawn to Jesus and they were just wanting to follow Jesus, you know. Like um, if Jesus was saying that they have to keep the Sabbath, they were wanting to, to, to keep the Sabbath. And um, yeah. they, yeah, they were following the steps of Christ. Yeah. That's good. It's cool, man. Yeah, because Jesus doesn't say, um, let the little kids come to me if um, in your culture, you know, it, I don't know how to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus says, let the, let the children come to me. This indicates that Jesus believed that on a personal spiritual level, kids could come to him. Mm. They could understand. And um, I feel like, on the one hand, you've, you've got to make sure that you package biblical truth in a way that young people can understand. But yeah. on the other hand, you don't want to dumb it down and assume that these young kids can't really understand because they can, hi. Huh? Oh, definitely, definitely. And, and um, I could see that with these kids, that they were really smart. And um, even studies like further in the track, I was asking them questions about studies that we had at the beginning, like about doctrinal things, and they were just giving me the right answers. Like it was not like, uh, they retained that in their brains, and in their minds. Yeah. They were like giving me like right answers, like why they were doing uh, what they yeah. were doing, or why they were believing what they were believing. Yeah. It was just amazing to, to see that. Amen, that. amen. amen. I, I almost find, I don't know about you, but I almost find that younger people have a better time retaining information and processing information because their minds are so fresh and energetic, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, even when I was, um, I think I was there, eight, I was 13 when I gave my heart to God. And yeah. I was I just fully under, understood what I was doing. And yeah. praise the Lord, I'm still in the church. I'm still in ministry working for Him. And sometimes we um, try to minimize uh, what God can uh, teach in the minds of, of, of the kids, you know? Yep. So you didn't patronize them. You didn't dumb the gospel down. You shared the gospel with these young people and the biblical truth uh, for yep. this time. Yep. yep. And lifting up Jesus and like the Holy Spirit did the, the rest. Yep. I was just like a vessel. I was not even like, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, so is there any kind of encouragement that you could give to the church family? in regards to outreach ministry for young people, right? Like, cause it seems to me, and I, it doesn't just seem to me, I don't want to say it so softly. I believe with all my heart that the most open people to God are young people, are, are teenagers, uh, even elementary school kids. And they need, a, they need support. And they, well not, I should say they, they need people to believe that and to reach out to them. So is there anything you can say to the church family who's listening as a way, as a way of as anything to encourage church people to, to be more missional and focused on, on reaching out to young people in their church and in their community. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think the first thing would be like, um, like in their homes, you know, if they have like godly parents uh, just to support uh, these, these kids. Like I was reading like um, an article recently that says like a, uh, the key or the people that grown up or stayed in the church, most like they, they stayed and they, they didn't leave the church, were, were people that they were baptized like early in the, in the, in the uh, when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And I would just find like things like fascinating because sometimes we don't want to be like kids to give their hearts to God at a, at a young age mm -hmm. because we think they don't understand. And, uh, but when we push that and just like sometimes wait until they're like, we think they're ready, mm -hmm. sometimes we, um, we lose them. 
And yeah. I just want to, yeah, I just want to encourage like uh, the parents and even the yeah people from the church. Like if if um, you have kids in your church, lift up Jesus, you know, and they would because there's something about Jesus that is just like in us that we want to be like him. And when we share these things, these doctrinal things, uh, putting Jesus um, first, the natural reaction for the kids will be like, hey, I want to be like that guy. I want to be, I want to be like him. I want to follow him in his steps. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah, God's put eternity in their hearts too. And they, they were recreated in Christ and his Holy Spirit's with them too, for sure. Um, convicting their hearts and bringing them to a point of repentance in Jesus' name. I really feel it's, it's a great injustice to patronize children and, and to assume that they do not have spiritual sensibilities and that they cannot be open to a real genuine experience with God. It's unfortunate because there are people who do, I think, just take advantage of kids sometimes and just, you know, dunk them because they're kids and because, you know, you can, mm. you can get kids to do what you want them to do sometimes. And I think that's a, that's a real unfortunate thing. Uh, but just because, people minister and do evangelism to kids the wrong way. It doesn't mean that there isn't a right way to do it. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. mean that, that we cannot, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't bring the Holy Spirit's power through the word of God to young people. Hey, hey yeah. so just a quick question came to my mind because I was just going to end with that, but I just thought I'd ask you as a Bible worker and as a, just a, a seven day Adventist Christian and as a, a person who was baptized young your, yourself, uh, do you see any danger in, in baptizing a kid if the kid is not, I keep saying kids, I'm getting too old, but is, it, is there ever a danger in baptizing children when they don't understand? What would the dangers be of baptizing someone who's young into the faith who doesn't really have the faith? Is there any danger in that? And what would you see that to be? Uh, well, well, yeah, I think like if they don't uh, understand what they're like being baptized into, there's danger that it might be just like, uh, oh, just because everyone else is doing it. Like, I don't have to have like a, a personal relationship with God. It's just like, you know, I'm going with the, with the wave. I'm going with, with what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it would be like uh, just, okay, let's baptize them then, um, you know, as babies, you know? But we don't believe in that as a church. You're right. So You're right. It, it would be the same thing. It would be the, like the same thing. So it will be a danger, but um, if a kid is fully with the Holy Spirit and they understand um, why or the necessity of baptism, I don't see like uh, why not. Even we 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 find uh, stories in the early church where uh, the Holy Spirit was using kids and they were preaching man with power and, and the Holy Spirit was using them. Even in the Bible as well, we find the story of, of um, Samuel. Yeah, you know, no. like it's um, the Bible said that they were uh, God couldn't communicate with anyone, and he had yeah. to use a kid. He had to use a kid. So it depends. Well, Jesus says, you know, Jesus. Sorry to interrupt you. Jesus says in in Matthew 11 when he's in, uh, I think he's in Capernaum. I'm not sure, but he he basically he raises his voice against multiple cities who are rejecting him in the time, and he says, "Praise you, Father, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent." And you've revealed them to babes. You've revealed them to children. And so he's making this kind of corporate statement that, you know, older people think so highly of their own opinion that they can't accept the truth. But these young people, their minds are open and fresh and clean. And when they hear the truth of the kingdom of heaven, then God reveals it to them, you know, because they're not so wise and so prudent in their yeah. own eyes. And, you know, I was thinking I wanted to just add on to your, your thing. And don't lose your point. You were talking about Samuel and, you know, whatever. And I'll let you close off the, the little interview here, bro. But uh, it conditioned, you know, we teach people by precept and by example. So what we say and what we do it teaches people. And so as a church, we may say, hey, you can have a great, powerful experience with God and, and teach that with our mouths. Uh, and you can have a real experience with God. We can say that to kids and with our mouth. But if we're just forcing them through into baptism, like, like you're saying, like infant baptism, but they're just a little bit older than infants, you know, but they don't understand we're kind of conditioning them and in a way we're cheapening very spiritual things. So mm. they just have like no, you know, to them it's just nothing because 
they'll always associate baptism with, with nothing because it meant nothing to them because they yeah. really didn't understand or have an experience with God where they were being born again and experiencing the Holy Spirit, you know? And they didn't comprehend what it all meant. And then baptizing them, it's almost just cheapening the experience in their minds, you know, because you're teaching yeah. them by your example of baptizing them when it doesn't mean anything. And so they just think it doesn't mean anything, you know? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, by the way, I didn't ask these kids for... Uh, for baptism they were the ones telling me like hey we see this like in the bible uh where can we be baptized and i have to tell them wait wait we have to study more and and, and um and then we, we, we'll see and then when the time came they were like the ones asking me questions like hey things like when or how and um yeah like that, that's what i was saying i didn't do anything i was just a vessel the, the holy spirit put that in their hearts Mm -hmm. And they responded to the call the Holy Spirit was, was doing in their hearts. We'll make That's it, awesome. Yeah. Praise God, man. Well, hey, listen, brother, I just want to thank you on behalf of the church family for your ministry. And uh, praise God with you that these young people are, have chosen to raise their hand for God and, and write their names through the blood of Jesus in the, in the book of life. And uh, yeah, God bless you as you continue to mentor them and disciple them as soul winners in their own right. But um, yeah, thanks for taking the time, man. We'll, we'll have you back again. We'll do another interview so we can just share a little bit more about your ministry and who you are uh, with the church family, brother. But uh, yeah, thanks a bunch. Yeah, no, no worries. Thank you so much, Mike. Awesome, brother. Yeah, see you, man. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.